and we'll get everything started. Here we go. Excellent. All right, tell me how that looks. Do you see the uh, the agenda that came up? It's taking a second to paint up here. It should be here in a minute. Okay. Right now, I got a black screen. Not seen it yet, Lee. Oh, not coming up yet. Mm -mm. Let's see. Here we go. Now I got the agenda. Now it just came up. All right. Yep. Excellent. So we should all be right. should be all set. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you, Dave. I do appreciate the opportunity today to uh, have this discussion with you just about uh, retirement planning, uh, long-term care planning specifically, and uh, long-term care discussion as as I like to put it. Uh, my name, again, is Lee Superville with uh, Lincoln Money Guard. Uh, I've been with Lincoln Financial Group and uh, Money Guard specific division a little over uh, seven years. Uh, currently, I'm the Money Guard external specialist on the West Coast, um, handling those accounts. And uh, again, it is a pleasure to be here to talk to you about a very fastly growing situation uh, in retirement, and that is really long-term care planning. Planning for or saving up for long-term care expenses that it may or may not happen in the future has taken on a new face. In other words, it is drastically different uh, than what it was before in the past. So I do want to touch a little bit on what type of environment we're in right now uh, with the low interest rate environment, the long-term care that's out there, and what that really means for the long-term care discussion uh, with your clients to help position certain solutions that are not only good for them but also guaranteed, uh, which is a, a very important word and a very important idea to keep in mind when uh, looking at retirement nowadays with a lot of the changes that went on. Uh, also what we'll discuss too is the options just for planning. So we will take a, take a look at not just MoneyGuard but also a few other options that uh, clients do have for long-term care. Um, third, we are going to look into the planning flexibility. Uh, in today's discussion, we're going to focus on uh, MoneyGuard 2, which are, is our new solution that was launched in February. Uh, now, uh, anyone that is on the call that might be doing business in either uh, Hawaii, California, uh, Arizona, uh, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, also uh, Delaware or Florida, uh, those states do have uh, Money Guard Reserve Plus, uh, which is a similar type of solution. But just to keep in mind, we are going to focus on uh, Money Guard 2 uh, for this discussion. And the idea with Money Guard 2 is to be able to give more options uh, as far as how to fund this type of policy and obviously more options to say to the client you can get more long-term care if you put together a plan this way and we'll discuss how that works. And then last but not least we're going to go through some uh, case studies, some prospective clients uh, and see the numbers behind an individual, uh, what they're getting for long-term care, what they're getting for a death benefit and how money guard works uh, for them. We'll wrap it up with a few sales ideas as well and then finally we'll have some time for uh, Q&A, and uh, we move forward and be able to answer all those questions for you uh, right there. Now, as far as the long-term care environment and what we're looking at right there, there's a lot of uh, statistics that you might be aware of. Uh, there's a lot of unprecedented numbers that are being reached uh, every year. Now, the one in front of you is one that you might be familiar with already, and it's that every day more than 10,000 baby boomers are turning the age of 65. So the elder population obviously growing uh, vastly, which is also increasing uh, the risk for long-term care uh, as well. Uh, a few things to keep in mind is that the <coughs> disposable income, excuse me, in the next three years for those individuals that are 50 years old or older, uh, it's going to be over 70% of that disposable income is going to be in their hands. Uh, in a sense, we're actually just seeing a transition of disposable income from the uh, planning phase or the accumulation phase over to the distribution phase for most uh, individuals. Again, uh, with, with Money Guard and how that works, this is a repositioning uh, strategy, so targeting disposable income is very important. Uh, another thing to keep in mind 
with this type of uh, baby boomer environment that we're experiencing right now is also that 70% of individuals are turning the age of 65 as well. This is very important to look at, mainly because also with this same demographic, less than 5% of individuals even have a focused uh, long-term care type of solution in their portfolio. Uh, they might be planning for some sort of emergency or not planning for some sort of uh, emergency. However, it's important to know this because if you do the math, over 95% of individuals are, in a sense, self-insuring. Um, so most uh, individuals that are looking at long-term care planning are comfortable uh, with the idea of self-insuring, uh, but they also believe that long-term care is the same type of uh, risk as it was, let's say, 10 years ago, which that isn't the case. Uh, whatsoever. What I'd like to share with you to m make a little bit more sense as far as what I'm talking about, the changing environment of the long-term care industry, uh, Senior Housing News actually came out with a research a study and a survey and a publication about uh, looking at the average affluent baby boomer and seeing exactly how they see the long-term care industry. It was an interesting article mainly because one of the questions they asked the a average affluent baby boomer is, if you had to take on long-term care expenses over a year, how much do you think it would cost? And the answer that they gave, the average answer that they gave was simply $36,220. So in other words, they said the average cost for long-term care in a year is probably around $36,220. Um, now, if that number doesn't jump out to you, in 2012, the average cost for long-term care was about $80,000 a year. This page actually shows you our uh, nursing home private costs, um, which is actually a little over $95,000 in 2013, which is an a national average. Obviously, some states a lot higher, a few states uh, a little bit lower. But just looking at the fact that the average aff affluent baby boomer thought that long-term care costs were around 36000 when they weren't even close to that, and in today's numbers, not even close to that at all, is a little bit scary. Now, now, the article actually continued to go on. That wasn't the end of it. It uh, did also plug in another statistic in there and said that in 2030, the average cost for long-term care is going to grow to $265,000. Uh, if you haven't heard this statistic already, you'll probably hear more of it because of how profound it is. But it did say in 2030, about 15 years from now, average long-term care costs on the nation is going to be $265,000. So that's really the essence of what I'm getting at as far as how the long-term care industry has taken on a new face and is rapidly changing. We're seeing uh, vast increases in costs for long-term care. You're well aware of that. But the scary thing is that most clients are unaware of that. Uh, and we all know that the unknown is probably a far more scary thing than any. And when it comes down to retirement and all the goals that they have as well, we want to make sure that every, everyone is protected and everyone does have a guaranteed plan. And there are a few vehicles in there that truly will be able to not only help uh, carry an individual's uh, money to make sure that it's growing with the cost of long-term care, but also giving them a guaranteed situation. But they definitely will be able to use it uh, in the future. So again, we'll touch on some of those solutions <clears throat> in just a bit. But again, that is a great article just to uh, think about as far as having the long-term care discussion. Uh, with an individual as far as what they see and how they uh, picture long-term care because there are misconceptions out there and it's important to be able to help educate at least and be able to shed light on uh, what to think about and what to do when you are thinking about retirement planning because long-term care planning is right in that discussion uh, as well. Uh, with this slide, it goes into <clears throat> another statistic uh, as far as perception and reality. And, uh, I've been speaking to that a little bit already as far as uh, what that means for individuals. Uh, the perception here in this financial challenge is that most individuals will rely on family uh, as far as, as, they, uh, as they age. Now, the reality is that Americans who needed long-term care are actually uh, less likely to believe that they could rely on family, uh, which makes a lot of sense, and these are for individuals over 40. Uh, most people do want to uh, rely on certain things that they have in the past when it comes to long-term care, but we all know that uh, planning for the future, we are looking for more guaranteed 
solutions. Uh, friends and family, on paper, very good to know that that can be a solution for long-term care, but not a guaranteed solution. Uh, but it is good to have the discussion uh, with the client as far as what they uh, see long-term care. Uh, normally, if you say the word long-term care, in general, most people just think about a nursing home. But we do know that it is part of a full uh, arsenal of services that we actually have out there. <clears throat> it's important to know that 70% uh, of individuals uh, that go on claim actually start off at home. And it makes more sense for them to stay at home if that's the possibility. Uh, it can be a progression, as you can see here, in plenty of assisted living to finally a nursing home. But uh, an individual is not going to enter a nursing home unless they have to. Uh, so it actually is more likely that they would be on claim at home. And if they can, they actually stay at home. The uh, home health care service industry is the fastest growing in long-term care and health care in general. Uh, most individuals that, again, stay at or go on claim at home would like to stay there. And there are more services that even nursing homes are providing to allow individuals to stay at home. Now, this is another thing to keep in mind that with more of the home health care services uh, being used, this is also adding to the rising cost in long-term care as well. So it's not only inflation, it's not only consumer demand, but also the home health care industry uh, as well. All these factors are causing these long-term care costs to grow unprecedentedly. And in 2030, we'll see that average come to $265,000. So definitely reiterate with the conversations that you have. Um, make sure that you know what the costs for long-term care are today, but prepare for the long-term care costs that will be in the future in a guaranteed way where you know those benefits won't change. So let's take a moment and look at some of the options that you have for preparing for, for long-term care and what's actually out there. Uh, we all know, and uh, this is what I've been speaking to, that the rise in long-term care costs has taken on uh, unprecedented levels. Uh, so we want to make sure that being able to plan for long-term care, is there's more of a focus for it on the future, and that is the guaranteed. Uh, with most individuals that have the long-term care uh, discussion, that they're aware of the long-term care risk. Uh, but they're unaware of all their options. Uh, if they know of any, it's probably going to be the one that you see in front of you here on this slide, and it's a traditional long-term care, which is a, a good vehicle for long-term care because it does have a focus uh, in this area. So this uh, is a type of solution that more people are used to talking about um, and obviously using back uh, at least earlier or years ago. Uh, now, there are objections towards uh, traditional uh, long-term care insurance, and they're actually listed here for you. If you're unfamiliar with traditional long-term care, essentially, it's more like uh, paying for car insurance, where you pay premium after premium. Once you need that care for long-term care, you get to use it. However, if you never get sick, you never become frail, you don't need those, that type of service, uh, then you lose it, which is one of the bigger objections with uh, traditional long-term care is uh, the fact that I may not get sick. And uh, most people will believe that they won't get sick, which uh, makes sense. So with traditional long-term care, there is that user loser mentality, which is the number one objection. Uh, as we go down the list also, with uh, traditional long-term care, there can be uh, rate increases. Uh, there's no guarantee there as well, which uh, you may have uh, already read about um, in the industry. So they do have that ability to, to move rates and move benefits. Uh, third, uh, there are waiting and elimination periods. So the benefits that a client has, they do have to wait a certain number of days, uh, usually between uh, 30 to 90 days before they can actually start using the benefits uh, in that policy. Uh, between that 30 and 90 day elimination period or waiting period, that they're paying out of pocket, uh, which is unfortunate. Fourth is going to be a, it's expensive. And what that means is that uh, Traditional long-term care is an expense approach to long-term care. In other words, um, it, at the beginning, it is more income-based where it's a smaller premium that you're paying, but over time, those premiums can add up. So if you're paying into this for 20, 30, 40 years, it can't become expensive. At the end of the conversation, most individuals will say, well, you know, I can self-insure. Instead of putting those premium dollars into that type of solution, I can just hold on to it. 
I can hold on into the bank, I can hold on to it in a money market or a CD, for example, and then when the emergency happens, if it does, I can use it then. That's sort of the mentality that's going on now. Unfortunately, we're also looking at situations where the interest rate environment is so low, where this money that they are holding on to self-insure, quote-unquote, is growing next to nothing. Um, unfortunately, the one thing that is not growing next to nothing is inflation and obviously the cost <clears throat> for long-term care. So the money they have in the bank will not be able to keep up with that growing cost and isn't the best or guaranteed way really to uh, fund or plan for long-term care. <clears throat> now, if the client is okay with uh, self-insuring, that's actually great. Um, you do want to I talk about the benefits for self-insuring because they do get a concept that makes sense as far as having control of their money. The reason why this is so great as well with the long-term care discussion is that Lincoln Money Guard is a way for the client to continue to self-insure. Now they can continue to self-insure but on better terms. Then the client will say, well, what are the better terms that you're speaking of? <coughs> and these are the better terms right in front of you. Uh, Lincoln Money Guard has a way of providing tax advantage reimbursements for qualified long-term care expenses if they need it. Also, it's going to be able to get benefits if they don't need a long-term care in the form of a death benefit. And also, premiums will never increase as well. So, guarantee, um, Money Guard excuse me, is also a guaranteed type of solution. Last but not least, there's no elimination period the money guard so the benefits they have are guaranteed when it's time to use it but also when it's time to use that type of solution or they need long-term care there's no waiting as far as when you'll be able to use uh, those benefits and get reimbursed and money guard is a solution that's been around for over 25 uh, years and we are proud to say in the uh, hybrid industry uh, the hybrid industry which is a, a fast-growing industry uh, we have over 80% uh, market share, uh, more policyholders, and more individuals on claim uh, than any other competitor. And, and in, the, in this uh, environment where we see how uh, the interest rate can obviously affect individuals, it's good to know that uh, we have been here longer and we have been doing uh, business longer. And we are also just looking for more ways uh, to provide clients with a guaranteed approach to long-term care planning. And again, coming out with Money Guard 2 back in February was just another a great example of that. Uh, really what we're trying to do and the focus for uh, Money Guard 2, again, is a simple approach to long-term care planning. It's a, it's a better way to self-insure, like I said. But it is also giving uh, more options uh, to clients as far as how they can increase their long-term care leverage and also increases or also um, uh, increases the way of funding this for this type of solution. So there's more options uh, for an advisor like you to talk to more individuals when it comes to long-term care. Um, they can be younger, they can be individuals, they can't afford the one-time claim. We can look at exactly how that works uh, in just a bit. Now the slide you have here is the quick one, two, three as far as what uh, Money Guard is. A uh, very simple approach, like I said. And it can be explained very simply and very easily as well. But again, Money Guard is that reimbursement or, excuse me, re, repositioning type of strategy. It's a better way for them to self-insure. Uh, normally, repositioning a portion of uh, rainy day money or money that is uh, sitting in the bank for an emergency, and this type of solution is usually key. And once they do, they get these three guaranteed benefits. One is for long-term care, tax-free uh, reimbursements if they need the care. If they don't, the second benefit is the death benefit, which is also income tax-free, sent to the beneficiary that they're choosing. And third but not least, <clears throat> last but not least, is the return of uh, premium options uh, for that individual. So there are options where they can get all or part of their money uh, back. Uh, but most individuals will uh, show you or actually describe Money Guard with three words, and they'll say live, quit, die. Essentially what that means is that if you live and need long-term care, Money Guard's there for you. Uh, if you don't and you die, Money Guard's there for you as well. And also, last, uh, last but not least, if you decide to quit and ask for your money back, Money Guard's there for you as well.
So let's take a look at the uh, third option, how that looks for you. I told you there are options for the return to premium, and now there are two with MoneyGuard 2. Uh, the first one is that client has uh, the option to, at any point, this is a lifetime guarantee, to ask for 80% of all their plan that, or their, all, their, all their paid premiums. Uh, now, this is available for all the options that they choose, all the funding options that they choose. Uh, and it's important to know that this uh, does go into effect after all premiums are made. So if they are paying over time, uh, this will go into effect as soon as that last premium payment has went into uh, effect. This option is referred to as the basic ROP option. Uh, the second one is referred to as the uh, vested uh, ROP option. And this simply says that you'll be able to get back all your money after five years. On the first year, you get back 80%, second year 84%, and it scales up until the end of year five where you can get back 100% of your premium, which is more of a conservative approach for return to premium. Between the two, it's important to know, excuse me, it's important to know that the uh, first option or the basic ROP option does provide more long-term care uh, leverage or more long-term care money for the client. So if they're looking to maximize their long-term care leverage, they want more long-term care dollars if they need it, choose the basic, the first option, where they get back 80% of their pay, paid premium. That's important to keep in mind if you're looking at uh, illustrations and different type of options. I've actually seen advisors show uh, two uh, illustrations to a client, one with this basic option, option number one, and then one with the vested option, option number two. They'll see the increase to long-term care, but at least they have the choice as far as what type of solution they want to go with based on their expectations for, for long-term care. But a lot of advisors are having success showing it in that way. So that is uh, MoneyGuard, fairly in a nutshell, live, die, quit, long-term care, death benefit options for return of premium. Uh, two other things that are worth mentioning when describing MoneyGuard is one, that it is guaranteed. So all the benefits they see in the illustration, all the benefits you talked about, those are all guaranteed. The second is also the underwriting. So a great solution, but also we want to make it simple for the client uh, to get. So I want to speak a little bit before we move on how our underwriting is unique uh, in the industry. Our underwriting is referred to as a streamlined underwriting. And what that means is that we don't have any medical records that we review, um, no APSs. We don't report uh, to the MIB, no blood and urine, no pricks and needles for the client to worry about. What I like to say is that our streamlined underwriting takes the pain out of, out of underwriting. And what it does is all we do is ask for the client to do a, a phone call with a registered nurse, which takes about uh, 45 minutes. Everything that's said on the phone call goes into the decision. Also uh, noteworthy, before the phone call is a prescription drug screening done behind the scenes. The client doesn't have to worry about. But we do that prescription drug uh, screening first. And then we do the uh, phone call. Once the phone call is done, we work on a decision for you. MoneyGuard is, uh, doesn't have any ratings, so it's pass or fail. Um, essentially, is how quickly that works. Which means that this phone call is worth preparing for, right? So we ask for um, a few things from the client and the uh, agent to do to help the client get ready for the phone call. Now the uh, first thing before the uh, process starts is the first step for money guard, which is pre-underwriting. Uh, pre-underwriting is uh, fairly simple. There's a few forms that we have for you that will list uninsurable uh, conditions. Uh, if you haven't seen this uh, already, it just lists certain conditions on there that we won't be able to accept. Uh, so you want to be able to review this um, and have a conversation with your client just to make sure that there isn't anything, any knockouts, if you will, off the bat. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is to help the client get ready for the phone call. You want them to fill out what's called a, a PHI uh, worksheet. And the PHI worksheet is about three pages long, very simple, but it will have all the medical information that the client will need to answer the nurse with so it makes the phone call a lot shorter, makes the phone call a lot easier, but also it makes it a lot more accurate uh, as well. Uh, it's important for the client to know that 
only talk about you know, conditions that have been diagnosed and uh, be careful not to self-diagnose themselves as far as just saying that, you know what, my back hurt yesterday, but I never necessarily had any chronic back pain or anything like that that the doctor told me about. It's important just to focus on what has been diagnosed and what they discussed with their uh, personal physician. But once they have the solution, they go through this uh, process, it's good to know once they, once they actually have it um, and it comes down time to use it, uh, Money Guard does work similar to any other long-term care type of solution where they just need assistance with two out of six ADLs um, and then they'll, or some sort of severe cognitive impairment, excuse me, and then they'll be able to use the solution. And again, with no elimination period, there's no waiting around to get reimbursed. And they're reimbursed up to the monthly maximum uh, as well. And we'll look a little bit more as far as how those numbers work for you uh, right now. So what we have in front of you is uh, Nancy. Uh, for, for the examples you're gonna, we're going to see here, there's three examples. Uh, they, they're all based off of uh, this individual. So Nancy's six-year-old, and she qualifies for a couple's discount. Now, I did mention that uh, Money Guard's giving more options to help increase long-term care leverage. We talked about one of them, the ROP options. So if you choose that basic or that first option, you get more long-term care. Also, if you qualify for a couple of discounts, so if you're married, uh, domestic partnership, civil union, defined by that state that they're in, uh, you will qualify for the couple of discounts and get more long-term care as well. Uh, her concern is that uh, <clears throat> an illness could deplete her savings. So she wants to be able to pre prepare for something like that in a guaranteed way. So we talk about Money Guard too. And it could be a simple discussion that goes along the lines of, well, if there was an emergency that happened tomorrow, what asset would you liquidate first, Nancy? And then she tells you about some of the liquid assets that she actually has. That would be perfect uh, to start the conversation from Money Guard as far as how to reposition uh, part of those into this type of solution to give her guaranteed protection for long-term care, or also protection if she doesn't. Uh, so let's see exactly what sort of numbers look like uh, for Nancy and also all of her options as far as how to fund this. Because again, Money Guard 2 does focus on not only options to increase long-term care leverage, but options to fund it as well. Uh, the, the first one, we're looking at a at a 4 pay. So before I move on, uh, there are actually 10 ways that you can fund Money Guard 2. Uh, you can do a, a 1 pay, or you can actually pay over 10 years or anywhere in between. This option shows uh, Nancy putting in $25,000 uh, for the next uh, four years. So when we talked to Nancy, we did uh, want to say we want to put in either now or over the course of a few years $100,000. So let's look at a few options that we have. Again, this one is over four years, $25,000 per year. The good thing for Nancy, once the first payment goes in today to put the policy in force, so that check for $25,000, she gets the full long-term care benefit and the full death benefit. We actually see that with the long-term care um, in option one, which is, again, going to be the uh, basic option where they get back 80% at any time. She gets a monthly maximum of 6863 She gets an annual amount of 82000 Three hundred and fifty-seven, and the total long-term care bucket, all added up together, is four hundred ninety-four thousand one hundred and thirty-nine. Now she doesn't need any of the long-term care. There's a death benefit for one sixty-four seven thirteen, and then if she does want her money back again. You can see here after the fourth payment is made, she can get back eighty thousand dollars and that return a premium bucket. So that's how the first option looks for for Nancy. The second option is the vested schedule, the more conservative uh, approach for return to premium. And you can see how the numbers are a little bit lower in this environment for Nancy. So again, another great strategy as far as presenting the solution, showing one option one ROP and option two ROP, the, the basic invested, and having the client decide uh, if they would want more long-term care or maybe a little bit more security. Well, one thing to note for the return to premium as well is that since Money Guard has been around for over 25 years, uh, less than 2% of individuals have even called Lincoln and asked for the money back. Less than 2% have actually done the return of premium. And so it's a great conversation to have um, as far as, oh, here's, here's the security for you, here's the, 
uh, liquidity for you, but very few people exercise it because the focus is long-term care. <clears throat> and we talked about that growing number and the growing cost for long-term care, so more individuals are, are prone and understanding that these unprecedented high levels of long-term care that are out there, I'm going to need something to help protect me. Um, so really that return premium is only there for an emergency, but again, a great talking point and great to mention to the client. So let's look at this uh, second scenario. Now, again, with MoneyGuard, uh, if they can't afford that one-time premium, they can't pay over time, which is why uh, advisors are having this conversation with younger individuals or individuals that they may not be as affluent. Uh, but being able to spread that payment over 10 years can be an advantage for some people, which is why that conversation is, is worth having. In this example, uh, this, again, this is Nancy, six-year-old female. Uh, she's putting in 10 payments, $10,000 a year. Again, the great thing is that the, as soon as the first payment goes in, she gets all these uh, guaranteed benefits, whether she needs it for long-term care or a death benefit or asks for a money back. Uh, it starts off with a monthly maximum of 6216 an annual uh, number of 74589 and a total long-term care bucket of $447,531 for long-term care. Um, now, if she doesn't need a long-term care benefit, there is a death benefit for 149 177 And then if she does decide to ask for her money back after the 10th payment, she'll get back $80,000 again, that same uh, return of premium uh, option. One thing to note as well, when a client does pay over time, they do get the full long-term care benefit if they need it. Uh, if they did pass away while they're making payments, they'll get the full death benefit and the uh, policy will cancel, so they won't owe any more payments. So another advantage there. Um, now, if they need a long-term care benefit, there's no waiver of premium. So in this case, Nancy would still have to continue to make her 10 payments, but she would still get that monthly maximum every month for option one, $6,216. So again, another another advantage for paying over time and how that works. You can tell since she's paying over 10 years, a little bit less than when she was paying over uh, four years, and how that works. And again, the second option is a little bit lower in long-term care and death benefit because of how uh, conservative the return of premium looks. Now, with this example as well, another reason why an individual might do a uh, 10 pay is if they don't have the non-qualified assets, and MoneyGuard is all non-qualified assets, but they don't have the non-qualified non assets, uh, an advisor also has success at looking at uh, qualified assets, repositioning that in over 10 years. If they're okay with taking the tax hit and the remainder of that distribution, that again isn't being used for expenses or paying for mortgage or anything of that nature, and then putting the remainder into uh, money guard premium over 10 years, spreading out the tax burden. And as soon as the first payment goes in, obviously you get all of the long-term care and death benefit access to them uh, right away. And you're being able to use money that might just be being used to pass on eventually at the end of the day uh, to better use as far as putting together a long-term care plan. So anything like an IRA or annuity, that type of income stream can be used as well after the uh, tax hit has been taken out to put in for a premium for money guard policy. Uh, this last example that we have here is uh, the one pay. So this shows... Uh, <coughs> A more classic example as far as just saying uh, maybe a CD sitting around for $100,000 or money market or uh, some money that they're able to reposition one time into the money guard. In this case, uh, Nancy's going to get a monthly maximum of $7,221 uh, every year. That will be $86,654 in a total long-term care bucket of over a half a million dollars, which comes to $519,000 dollars and 921. Now, if she doesn't need the long-term care, she has a death benefit on there as well, which comes to uh, $173,000. Um, oh, dollars three, uh, 307 And of course, after a while, if she doesn't want her money back, she can get back $80,000 with that first option, the basic uh, ROP option. Uh, the second option there for the uh, vetted schedule, a little bit lower. They can see from that uh, conservative standpoint what type of benefits uh, she's able to get. And again, that's our, our one pay example. Remember, Nancy can pay from anywhere between doing the one pay up to 
paying over 10 years or anywhere in between. So if she wants to pay over nine years or two years, heck, if she wants to pay over four or five years, she can do that as well. But having those options does open up the door for who you can talk to. Also, with Money Guard 2, there is no smoker rates out there. I do want to mention that. Uh, so what that means is that if you are talking to an individual that's a smoker, they're actually going to get the same rates as a non-smoker. Uh, so it is worth uh, going back and having a conversation with someone if uh, maybe you haven't before in the past because they were a smoker. Now, granted, um, in the underwriting process, they're still going to take into account that they are uh, smoking, but when it comes down to the illustration and showing them benefits, those individuals will benefit uh, from that using uh, Money Guard 2. All right, so now we've gone into talking about the long-term care environment, how fast that's growing, and now there really are only a few options that will truly protect the client for long-term care. And we talked about one of those options, which is Money Go To, and how that works where they get benefits whether they live, die, or quit, and obviously everything is guaranteed, and we have that streamlined underwriting process. Now I want to finish things up and just talk more about a few sales ideas that are out there. And when it comes down to the next conversation you have, or if you're thinking in the back of your head, who can I talk to about, or maybe who can I revisit this conversation with, <clears throat> here's a few ideas for you. So uh, the first one is a highly compensated professional. Uh, this is age demographic is roughly like 35 to 45 in this in this area. So the concern is that, well, I want to pay, I want to plan, excuse me, and save for my future. They have a lot of income coming in, but also a lot of uh, expenses as well. Uh, maybe they're concentrating more on just uh, building up their portfolio, accumulation of wealth idea. Uh, obviously, they're maxing out their 401k, things like that. So a one-time payment of, let's say, $100,000 or $200,000 isn't going to be possible for them. But being able to pay over time and do it at 10 pay is a good idea uh, in that environment, just to be able to help also allocate their assets in a way where they have guaranteed allocation. And they can obviously still focus on the other part of their portfolio that may not be guaranteed. For example, like stocks and, and things of that nature, as far as guaranteed growth. Uh, the next uh, example is the sandwich generation. Uh, between the ages of uh, 45 to 55, a lot of advisors are having success with having the conversation in this age demographic uh, because they are essentially sandwiched, quote unquote, in between paying for expenses for their children and possibly for uh, their parents as well. They might all be living together. So with a lot of income coming in, but obviously paying for a lot of expenses, things like uh, children's tu uh, tuition or uh, just general retirement expenses for their parents, they already know that they need a long-term care solution. But really the conversation in this demographic is just a practical solution, something that, that can actually fit in their budget. So paying over time and uh, makes sense to them. Uh, they already have the proof right in front of them. They might be already taking care of their parents, so they're open to the conversation. But again, they may not know all their funding options, which is where uh, you come in as well in the discussion. Uh, the next example, clients nearing retirement. I um, also do want to throw in um, clients that are uh, seven and a half plus. So nearing retirement, in, in other words, over the age of 59 and a half, uh, this is also going to be a good conversation to have as far as using like an annuity to help fund a money guard. If they don't have the non-qualified assets laying around, and this goes back to the example I talked about, uh, being able to use an annuity after taking the tax hit from the distribution and putting that in the money guard is a, is a safe way um, as far as replacing income, uh, but also giving a guaranteed solution for long-term care as well. Spreading it out over 10 years, for example, will help spread out that tax burden as well. So uh, when you're looking at uh, client's assets, it's worth having a discussion in this area. For individuals that are 70 and a half uh, plus, obviously RMDs is a discussion there. So similar idea, a little bit different. But if those distributions aren't being used for expenses, they're just going to be sitting there and they're going to be passed on. Um, it's better to see what you can do to replace income that they already gave to Uncle Sam, unfortunately, um, and put into a type of solution with guaranteed benefits to help protect their entire portfolio when they need long-term care, but also giving them tax efficiency if they don't by passing on a death benefit uh, to their loved ones. A few other things to think about as well as far as who usually has this conversation, uh, executive tops earners. Uh, there is an advantage if um, a C-Corp owns MoneyGuard, 
Uh, normally what we'd see there is a C Corp would own money guard, a key executive uh, would be the insured, and then the C Corp would be the beneficiary. Uh, once the key executive does use the policy for long-term care, um, there can be an extra corporate uh, tax advantage there, which is worth having a discussion. Uh, also, single females are very big with the discussion as far as they don't want to put any sort of other burden on their family. Um, so they do want a very simple approach when it comes down to uh, needing uh, long-term care. Uh, again, clients that are near retirement, uh, they know about the uncertainty that we've seen recently in uh, health care, where a lot of the burden is more on them now as far as how to figure out uh, that they're fully protected. Long-term care is right in that uh, type of conversation. So it's good to be able to have options as far as how to pay for long-term care in a guaranteed way, whether one time or over the course of uh, 10 years to make it easy, depending on the assets that they have uh, currently. And then, of course, high net worth clients. Mo some clients that uh, do look at MoneyGuard, they might be uh, such high net worth clients that they can afford long-term care already, but also they might even be able to buy a nursing home. <laughs> so they have those type of funds. But advisors have the conversation with them anyway because the idea with MoneyGuard is repositioning and asset allocation, ideas and concepts that they're already well aware of, and that's usually how they pay for things anyway. They never have been paying for their expenses as they grew their wealth dollar for dollar. Uh, what they've used is obviously the accumulation idea and being able to leverage dollars to help pay for expenses. And when it comes down to this, nothing different. Uh, it's repositioning and putting pockets simply, or excuse me, putting money from one pocket uh, to the next. But the big thing that changes there is how you use the dollar. Um, in other words, once you use it with a money guard, you get a lot more money for long-term care if you need it. You get tax efficiency for a death benefit if you don't. And uh, it does go a lot farther. So that's a concept that they're worth, uh, definitely worth having. Um, now, a few other ideas uh, as well as for our sales ideas. Uh, 1035 is a great uh, conversation to have. If a client might have too much life insurance or if you've done a policy review, you know it's undervalued life insurance. And obviously risk are going to change over time for a client. Uh, doing a 1035 from a life insurance policy in the money guard uh, tax-free situation, a great way to get their long-term care policy off the ground. And I've also seen individuals do a 1035 and then have a client pay over five years or pay over 10 years so they can actually get to that long-term care dollar they really need. But they start off with a 1035 so there's nothing that they have to pay out of pocket. And then they can just pay over the course of the next uh, nine years or, or four years to help get to that long-term care number that they really want. So that's another um, example that might be worth uh, thinking about. Thanks, now, as a, uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do, are you finished? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I did. No, no. I was actually coming right down um, uh, to the end of it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm pretty much all done. So if we want to open it up, I'll, I'll actually send it back over to you. Yeah, I'll grab the control back. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. We do want to open it up now for question and answer. Um, but the only way you can talk to me is if you have activated your audio pin. It's in the control pin on the right-hand side. I know David Wolf has some questions he wanted to ask, and he needs to activate his audio pin in order for me to unmute him to allow him to ask any questions. But I'm in the process of unmuting people as we speak. I do have a question for you. I'm not sure if you know this, Lee, but what percent of money guard policyholders have done a LTC claim versus a death claim. Oh, versus a death claim. Now, <clears throat> that is that's actually a good example or a good question. I can um I don't know the exact uh, percentage, but I can tell you um, mostly like the percentage on claim right now. Usually the uh, the average uh, claim is going to be due to like a cognitive issue. Actually, over fifty percent of our claims. Uh, cognitive issues. Um, another 25% <coughs> is based on things like you know, a heart attack or stroke or conditions that sometimes people do get better eventually. But uh, okay. the big thing I want to point out is usually it's cognitive issues. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, I've got everybody. Oh, there you are, David. Okay. <laughs> All right, David, do you have a, a question or two for Lee? I do, and Lee, you and I have already begun to have this conversation, so uh, you know some of my thoughts on this topic. 
Um, but in, in relation, my, my concern, and, and you can tell me if any other developments have happened, I had a conversation with Steve Schnudveld at the uh, mm -hmm. Society of Actuaries Conference. But, you know, frequently when we're having these conversations about combination or asset-based products, there's a, a lot of focus on the pools of money and how they work and the return of premium and so forth. My concern is actually in utilization. And, you know, not only in, in Washington State do we have this issue, but I was just in the state of North Carolina and talked to uh, the CEO of the biggest chain of continuing care retirement communities back there, and he also had the same concern. And that is the way that, that home care agencies and home health care agencies are licensed and some of the limitations inside the, the Money Guard product that restrict that utilization. Mm -hmm. um, in our state, that eliminates about 80% of home care agency providers. Um, so if you can comment to that, that'd be great. Sure, sure. So with um, what uh, Dave's actually looking at and talking about is that the uh, evolution of the long-term care market. So it, it's not only just the cost obviously going up, but obviously the services are uh, getting more in depth. And I told you that the home health care market in this case, in this case, uh, Dave is talking about specifically the home care market uh, agencies um, are changing as well, actually out there. And after looking at, and I, I did get a chance to talk with Steve, excuse me, a little bit as well. And after examining uh, some of the licensing requirements for uh, home care agencies, um, and indeed, uh, it does not follow like the uh, protections that we would envision, like most of our like policyholders. Um, usually with that said, it would be kind of like difficult just to say like a blanket statement that all of them would be considered approved. So uh, you are right. Um, some are indeed actually operating uh, appropriately underneath like qualified, skilled, and uh, unskilled employees as well as uh, appropriate like oversight or supervision that they need. But uh, there are not sufficient regulations in place to really make that like general statement. So th there are some in the home care market that may not approved uh, underneath what we have right now, uh, but that's mainly because of how that market is evolving and changing uh, as well. That also would require us to evolve and uh, change and obviously resubmit and put in a uh, new type of uh, solutions and have MoneyGuard change a little bit so it is covered appropriately. So we can't have like a blanket statement and say that we can't cover all of uh, home care agency. But um, that's probably the best way to understand it at this point. It wouldn't be able to cover everything. Yeah, so for, for those of us who've grown out of the traditional long-term care space and are living the current claims of contracts that we issued 25 years ago, you know, this is something that's haunting us now uh, in terms of actual utilization simply because, you know, the client goes out and hires an agency and that agency, you know, looks good to everybody else but doesn't qualify underneath the contract. And um, So actually, I think Steve requested I gather some more data for him and mm -hmm. I do have multiple people working on that issue because uh, it seems like the concern is 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 significant. So. It, it is a significant concern. It's also something that Steve and some of the other actuaries are approaching industry consultants because that's uh, really what we want to focus on, making sure that we have that you know right information. And we we did also do have a covered service with MoneyGuard um, called uh, Link at MoneyGuard. Um, concierge care coordination, which is another free service that does help uh, uh, current policyholders and as well as future policyholders from MoneyGuard to kind of understand uh, more about uh, long-term care. Have these certain, there's certain type of questions in the conversation we're having now they can have with them and when it's time to come to do a claim, they can do everything online, they can monitor the claim and they can make sure that before even submitting one that something uh, will be approved. So it's good to keep in mind that you can also have that conversation with a client around uh, 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 care coordination because MoneyGuard does have that now. We just adopted it last uh, last year. Yeah, and I, I had this con conversation with Steve as well. For, again, for those of us who've grown out of the traditional space, um, you know, the the alternate care benefit or, or any benefit that is or alternate plan of care, any benefit that's at the discretion of the insurance company doesn't uh, often leave producers who are seasoned with all that much comfort about future benefit utilization. So, mm -hmm. just some of my comments. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll yep. like it. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, we All do right. Appreciate, we do appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, so again, please uh, take a cruise around our website. Give us a call if you have any additional questions. And if you have any additional questions of Lee in particular, you can funnel those through me, and I'll make sure that they get addressed. So with that, thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you. Have a great one. Thanks again, Lee. Oh, thank you.